I rise today in support of my amendment, it's H.R. 21, which would prevent increased drilling on federal lands under this act until the Secretary of Energy certifies that it would not perpetrate environmental injustice. The room is not in order. Could you please take your conversations off the floor? The gentlewoman from California is recognized. Let me just thank, first of all, Chairman Pallone for his leadership and support in advancing this amendment. My amendment is very simple. It prohibits increases in the percentage of federal lands leased for oil and gas production under this act if that new drilling were, would uh, perpetuate environmental injustice. Environmental justice is the right to a safe, healthy, and productive and sustainable environment for all, regardless of race, class, income, or background. For too long, we have overlooked the impact of environmental issues on underserved communities in this country. EPA data shows that people of color are much more likely to live near polluters and breathe polluted air. For instance, asthma, which is often caused by particular uh, pollution, impacts approximately 13.4% of African American children compared to only 7.3% of white children but all low-income people and communities, and especially in poor communities, all communities deserve to be safe from environmental health impacts, and people of all races con confront environmental injustice. In rural communities, rural communities are all also adversely impacted by mining pollution and contaminated air and groundwater. Environmental injustices impact all of us, from urban centers to rural regions. In my home state of California, we're experiencing the climate emergency firsthand. We know that these unprecedented fires are driven by climate change, preventing harmful oil and gas drilling, especially when it harms those already most vulnerable, will help get us back on the path to justice. This amendment builds off of the A. Donald McEachum, our beloved late colleague, his Environmental Justice for All Act that I am proud to co-lead with Chair Grijalva, which sets the stage to begin addressing the long history of environmental racism and injustice in the United States. Now, Mr. Speaker, this fight for environmental justice is also very personal for me. I was born and raised in El Paso, Texas, under the shadow of smokestacks of the Asarco copper smelt smelter. Myself, my friends, my neighbors, we were constantly exposed to toxic chemicals. I watched so many people close to me, including family members, suffer with major health challenges because of lead that spewed from that plant. In the 1970s, the CDC found that 62% of children under 10 living near the plant where I live had toxic levels of lead in their blood. Even after the smelter was su shut down, I think it was like 2013, it took decades before any of the residents harmed saw any sort of justice. And so, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'd ask for unanimous consent to insert into the record an article. It's titled, Before Flint, Before East Chicago, There Was Smelter Town. Without objection, so ordered. So I'm not going to quit until all of my colleagues understand the human consequences of environmental discrimination. And I ask my colleagues to consider the people, the families, who every day bear the unequal and unjust consequences of our addiction to fossil fuels. As President Biden has said, justice must be at the heart of our response, and my amendment does just that. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on this amendment. Thank you, and I reserve the balance of my time. Oh, okay. General lady is advised you can't reserve for time, so Thank you. If, if you're ready to yield back, I'll, that'll I'll be yield, in order. I'll yield my time. Thank you.